Well, hello everyone, and welcome to what is surely going to be a very interesting time. This is Disco Elysium, a game that the internet would not shut up about for years. I just knew I had to play this at some point, and because it's a visual novel, I thought it would be a great fit for my channel. Now, before we begin, I should probably share everything I know about this game, and it's not a lot. So, basically, the basic premise, I think, is that it's about murder mysteries. Maybe? I, I think there's some sort of mystery element involved. If not, at least partially. And I think that in addition to being a visual novel, there are actually elements of classic RPG in this. Stuff like, you know, Baldur's Gate, or Planescape Torment, or Pillars of Eternity, or what have you. I've never actually played a game of that genre, even though by all means I would probably love them, but maybe for another day. Um, another thing I know is that one of the characters in this is a man in an orange coat, and his name is Kim, and apparently I will love and cherish him and want to protect him. Apparently. And last but not least, I remember watching live footage of a Game Awards show and a Disco Elysium staff went on stage to collect an award that they won. And among all the family and friends and co-workers they were thanking, they also thanked Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, which was unfathomably wild. <laughs> Had me going, oh... Oh, this is going to be an interesting game. <laughs> anyway, uh, before we hit new game, I would also like to say that in the options, I saw that there is streamer mode. Replaces certain copyrighted pieces of music with alternative tracks for safe streaming. And that is incredible. Thank you. This makes this Let's Play very easy. So, yeah, let's hit new game. Get right in here. Select Archetype. Oh, this art is gorgeous. Okay, Thinker. Extremely intelligent, very bad with people. Knows interesting facts, comes up with original ideas. Wait, so this is character creation. Okay, there's there's going to be quite a lot of RPG in this VN. <laughs> uh, f intellect. Your capacity to reason. Oh my god. Oh, oh. Are those stats? Oh, that's a lot of stats. Um? Okay, well, create your own. Create your own character. Of course I'm gonna do that. So, let's click this and then get into the nitty gritty, maybe. Adjust abilities. Intellect, Psyche, Physique, and Motorics. Oh my god. Your sense is how agile you are. Okay, so... Raw brain power, how smart you are. Sensitivity, how emotionally intelligent you are. Whoa. Yeah, like all the intellect in the world means very little if you can't connect to other people, right? And I feel like if this is about a, like murder mysteries, then a big part of that is going to be like talking to witnesses or like relatives of victims or what have you. And like, I feel like this would be really important. And physique, your musculature, how strong you are, your senses, how agile you are. Is there combat in this? Um. So, like, if I... Okay, I can take everything to one, can't I? And what's the highest I can boost something? Up to six. Genius. Ooh. Well, I feel like I absolutely like these top two way more than the bottom two. 
I kind of want to like build a very smart, emotional, intelligently person and all that. Yeah, good good words to describe intelligence, Zephyr. Good go good job. So I'm thinking Let's go with five on intelligence, maybe. Uh four for psyche. And a bit of motorix. Your senses. Oh, perception would be important to analyze crime scenes, wouldn't it? Okay, maybe I... Hmm. Maybe you take one out of in, intellig, intelligence, in, intellect. Boost up to average motorix. I'm fine with low physique. Now, um, maybe someone watching this is familiar with the game and is silently screaming at me. No, Zephyr, you fool. You have made the worst build imaginable. Well, that's all part of the fun now, isn't it? So, I think, I think I'm good with this. It, it feels right to me. Oh, hello. Okay. <clears throat> Set signature. Signature skills. Info. Okay, so these sub stats, you can get bonuses from items and thoughts. So it's more than just your base attributes. You also get bonuses. So let's, okay, let's go through all these one by one here. Okay, intellect, logic. Cool for analysis, pure rationalists, obviously, obviously logicians. Logic urges you to analyze living daylights out of the case. Ooh, okay, there is a case, okay. It enables you to piece evidence together, detect inconsistencies in statements, and impress everyone with your astonishing conclusions. It's the bread and butter of many a detective. At high levels, logic will be able to solve even the most complicated puzzle. You will be very proud and thus susceptible to intellectual flattery, for those blinded by their own brilliance often miss important clues. With the low levels of logic, you're going to have a hard time solving even the simplest puzzle. Even if you find the pieces, good luck putting them together. Dude, if even high stats can have a drawback that gets added on, that's cool. Someone could flatter my brain and it would fluster me. That, ooh, <laughs> wow, okay. Encyclopedia. Okay, yeah, this all this art is less beautiful and more intensely creepy, I must say. Cool for thinkers, historians, trivia freaks. Encyclopedia makes you a know-it-all, turning your mind into a database for facts. It enables you to draw on these facts innately, offering a wealth of background knowledge to all things related and unrelated to your case. Who knows when the history of cigarette brands will provide the breakthrough you need to arrest a murderer? or when knowledge of pre-revolutionary guns might save a life. At high levels, Encyclopedia shares this wealth of knowledge to an almost overwhelming degree. While it may give you crucial breakthroughs, it mo more often will clutter your mind with useless tidbits. With the low levels of Encyclopedia, though, you'll be forced to work with only the clues in front of you. Without any background knowledge, copying is going to be tough stuff. Oh, am I the police officer then? Copping? Huh. And let's make sure I did read everything. Yeah, no scroll. Okay, rhetoric. Ideologues, conversationalists, would-be politicians. Rhetoric urges you to debate, make intellectual discourse, nitpick, and win. It enables you to break down arguments and hear what people are really saying. You'll spot fallacies as soon as they're used. What exactly did the waiter leave out of their testimony? What was the dancer trying to divert you from? Was that double entendre intended, or did you just get an accidental lead? At high levels, rhetoric will make you an impressive political beast, one whose beliefs are impenetrable. 
which is to say, one whose mind will not change, one who will calcify. With a low rhetoric, though, you'll have a hard time of shooting down any argument. Nailing people to their testimonies will be nigh impossible. Okay, intellect seems incredibly important, dude. Drama. Undercover cops, thespians of the stage, psychopaths. <laughs> what? Okay. Drama urges you to treat the world as a stage and on it to perform. It enables you to lie, to concoct the most elaborate and wonderful stories, to take on ingenious personas and perform acts of stagecraft in an entertaining amalgam of forbury and deceit? Never heard that word, forbury. As well, it enables you to see through would-be actors and their false antics. If they lie, you'll know immediately. At high levels, drama may render you an insufferable, insufferable thespian, one prone to hysterics and bouts of paranoia, for to know the world as a stage is to know that truth is a vanity. However, with low drama, you cannot lie, or discern when others lie, and a cop who can't do either is a cop who's going to be lying six feet under. Okay conceptualization for creatives, psychedelic fanciers, and critics. Conceptualization has a special role it wants you to play in this world. Not the role of cop, but of art cop. It enables you to make fresh associations, to delve into world concepts from Jan Karp's postmodernist carpery to Revachol's um Revachol's yeah, Reva Cole's arabesque architectural style didgeridada, and even the concept of hardcore. And then, importantly, to add your own contribution to these works. At high levels, conceptualization makes you go big, perhaps too big. It is ostentatious, demanding grand displays. Why live life when you can throw yourself into a live volcano? At low levels, however, you will be unable to see the world in a creative light. You will be unable to contribute to conversations in an art gallery. Only boring people will invite you to their dust parties. Yeah, yeah I understood a few of those words. Did it read data? Uh. Visual calculus. Forensic scientists. Tactical fighters. Math-minded people. Visual calculus versus you not only in the laws of the state, but the laws of nature. It enables you to create virtual crime scene models in your mind's eye. You'll see how a bullet shattered the glass and from that trace its trajectory with mathematical precision. You'll also count so many footprints and at a glance discern shoe size and design, as well as the height, weight, and gender of the one who wore them. At high levels, visual calculus makes the world reveal its secrets to you, but you may be so absorbed by your mind diorama you don't notice those crooks steal your pants. However, at low levels, your mind's eye will be blind. Reconstructing crime scenes will be difficult without outside help. Well, okay, so that's intellect skills. These are the most important things in the entire world for a would-be cop, I guess. Now into psyche. Volition. Cool for sane people. Well-adjusted cops. The non-suicidal. Volition urges you to be a good guy to others and to yourself. It enables you to resist temptation, be it in a bottle, between a pair of legs, oh god, or at the end of an iron barrel which promises oblivion. Is it, did it just get heavy in here or is it just me? Volition gives you the will to finish the investigation, improving your morale. One of the two health pools of the game. Oh, hello. There are he there, there's health. Oh my god, there might actually be combat. What the hell? At high levels, Volition makes you hyper-sane. When you're about to get funky, it keeps you normal. It's a bit of a party pooper. At low levels, however, you'll have a little morale. Without it, you'll be... Profoundly unstable cop, falling apart at the seams as you make irreversible mistakes. Inland em Empire. 
cool for dreamers, paranatural investigators, mental creators. Inland Empire is the unfiltered wellspring of imagination, emotion, and foreboding. It enables you to grope your way through invisible dimensions of reality, gaining insight into that which sight can't see. What's really going? What do these enigmatic riddles mean for the world fate? At high levels, Inland Empire animates the inanimate. You'll have conversations with your clothing, conversations that may change the course of the investigation if you're not thrown in the loony bin first. With the low Inland Empire, however, you'll be void of imagination and character, and then how you shape the cosmos. This game's already a trip and I haven't even started. It's so well written. Um, empathy, judges of character, interviewers, interrogators. Empathy breaks into the souls of others and forces you to feel what's inside. It enables you to notice social cues others may miss. Perhaps a hidden sadness you could coax out a little more. A strange joy from someone who should be bereaved. Or a hidden resentment that could return to harm you later. At high levels, empathy really puts you in other people's shoes. You'll cry for their sorrows, punch walls to relieve their angers, and be an even more unstable cop. With low empathy, however, you'll be an ungainly beast, unable to talk to anyone without upsetting them. Authority. Leaders, experts of psychological warfare. Respect junkies. Authority urges you to assert and reassert your dominance over those around you. It enables you to understand the power, power dynamics of groups of thugs, know how far you can push a perpetrator, and how to establish control of situations. At high levels, authority demands respect. Even a perceived slight could send you into knee-breaking mode. <laughs> With low authority, however, you are forever in awkward situations. Like when you suffer psychological breakdowns after you yell at teenagers and they laugh at you. <laughs> okay. So just from these descriptions, this game is already making a lot of promises with its depth. Is this game actually going to live up to the stuff it's talking about? That is what I want to know. Um, Esprit Decor? Cool for cops, cop aficionados, pretend cops. Esprit de corps is the very spirit of policing, the cop geest. It enables you to understand your blue-souled sisters and brothers, not only by picking up subtle signals from your partner, but by witnessing flash sideways scenes as they play out in your precinct. Oh man. So we are a cop, aren't we? Villain protagonist. Oh, I mean, at high levels, you'll be very hard of the police force, not only willing and able, but obliged to take a bullet for your partner. However, without esprit decor, you'll be flying blind, unable to understand discreet remarks colleagues make in high-stakes situations, remarks that might just save your life. Suggestion. Diplomats, charmers, sociopaths. Suggestion urges a soft power approach. If people think they want what you want, you've already won. This skill enables you to implant ideas into the minds of others. You can make the citizens like you more. You can make gangsters turn on each other too. Many crime rings have been broken by just a little doubt, after all. At high level, suggestion makes you affable to everyone and more resistant to their charms in turn. But all that schmoozing and oozing charm will make you slimy, and you'll know it even if no one else does. With the low levels of suggestion, though, you'll have difficulty getting any kind of rapport among, uh, with others. You'll be alone, both during the day and at night. Okay, well, now for physique. And I'm absolutely freaking terrible at this, so... Great. Endurance. Cool for fighters who can take a hit, lookouts who don't sleep, human batteries. Endurance is your metabolism and circulatory system. 
It improves your health, one of the two health pools in the game. The other was Volition, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so at least my health isn't total garbage. It enables to survive being a cop. Who cares if you can't aim a gun if you can take a few bullet if you can take a few bullets? Why be afraid of drugs that hurt your health if you're a very, very healthy man? At high levels, endurance enables you to take a few knocks to the head, enjoy a greater quantity of drugs, and shake off a few cardiac arrests. It makes you a powerful man who looks down on the weaklings who can't keep up. However, cops with low endurance, me, are likely to struggle. The body is frail already, and the flesh of a cop will often be tested. And if it doesn't pass, it dies. Okay, this is a strong con uh, candidate for making one of my signatures. How many signatures can I get? I don't know yet. We'll see. Pain threshold. Unstoppable fighters, guys who won't die, masochists. Masochists, sorry. Pain threshold ignores damage so you can push on, bloodied and crawling to the bitterest end. It enables you to negate damage you would otherwise take, even mental pain, heartache, and loneliness. In fact, those things become a thrill you seek out and perversely revel in. Oh, wow. Okay. At high levels, pain threshold turns in on itself in seriously unhealthy way, with full-on self-destructive behavior. With a low pain threshold, however, you will suffer too easily. Even a slap from a teenager will make you whine and complain. I feel... Are, are teenagers gonna mock me in this game? I, I feel like they might. Physical instrument. Cool for muscle men, bare knuckle brawlers, gym teachers. Physical instrument is not only your muscles and your skeleton, it is your ability to use them effectively. It enables you to do push-ups, sit-ups, knockout punches, and 360 degree spin kicks! Okay, maybe having physique at one was a mistake. It's a one-size-fits-all solution to thriving and surviving in a physical world. At high levels, physical instrument breaks doors, chains, and bones, and makes you laugh at the namby pansies who can't. You'll be manned up, encouraging others to curl iron until they're manned up too. At low levels, however, you'll have a hard time arresting anyone who isn't infirm or already dead. Indeed, engaging in physical confrontations could leave you in either state. Uh. Okay, electrochemistry. High flyers, party enthusiasts, cops who need lightning. Huh? Electrochemistry is, an, is the animal within you, the beast longing to be unleashed to indulge and enjoy. It enables you to take drugs with fewer negative side effects. It also enables you to better investigate lurid matters if you need to understand a chemical breakdown or talk to someone blasted out of their mind or understand sexual dynamics. Uh, um, electrochemistry is there to guide you. Okay, look, I'm... If, if I can opt out of such things, I will. I'm, I'm very prudish, you understand. Um, at high levels, electrochemistry makes you a man of unrestrained pleasure. An unrepentant Lothario... Who... Eothario? Who leers at people with a bottle of speed and a plastic bendy straw in either hand. But with a low electrochemistry, you'll be too innocent to be effective. Without a working knowledge of drugs and sex, the city will be difficult to understand. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Shivers. Cool for city lovers, the wisest of the streetwise, the genuinely supernatural. That's supra-natural, not supernatural. Shivers come when the temperature drops and you become more keenly aware of your surroundings. It enables you to hear the city itself, to truly belong to the streets. It is a supernatural ability. Old rons play out in the present time. Scenes across the city happen in front of you. But who is speaking to you? At high levels, shivers may make you seem mad to the outside world. As you listen to the city, 
you don't listen to others. Your superiors may begin to worry. With a low shivers, though you will seldom hear the city speaking to you, and if you cannot hear it, how can you ever save it? Half Light. Cool for high strung investigators. Shoot now, ask questions later, cops. Surprise haters. Half Light is your fight or flight response. It enables you to sense the way situations are about to turn. It injects palpable fear into your heart. Fear that urges you to act before it's too late to act ever again. Fear that makes you frighten others. It is the aggression that lets you squeeze every last drop of information out of a witness. At high levels, Half-Light makes you ultra-attuned to the world. It is perpetual fear of your own shadow, of someone else's name or scent. You'll be ready, always, to pounce and physically interrogate passers-by. At low levels, however, you'll find your survival instinct is lacking, and your methods limp-wristed. Those who respect violence will not respect you. Okay, physique seems way too important to keep at one. I think I might actually want to go back here, lower Motorix by one, and take it up to two, at least. And now to read about Motorix and see that I want to actually go back to three. <laughs> Okay. Um, Hand-eye coordination. It loves... Oh, uh, it's good for trick shooters, snipers, and jugglers. It loves the interactions between you and things that fly in the air. It enables you to catch coins from mob bosses, shoot straight, and understand firearms intimately. Want to know the precise make and mark of a pistol? Hand-eye coordination's got you. Want to shoot someone with it? Ditto. At high levels, hand-eye coordination makes you deadly, supposing you have a weapon in your hand. But once you do, hand-eye coordination will compel you to take the shot, even if it's not the best approach. At low levels, however, you'll be even more of a disaster in waiting, because when the guns go off, and they always do, you'll probably hit the wrong target. Oh, I can just imagine a tense hostage situation, and you shoot the victim. <laughs> oh, man. Perception. I love perception. Cool for fine detail detectives, sensualists, urban scavengers. Perception wants you to be open to the world, with eyes, ears, and nose working at full capacity. Well, hey, me? I can't smell, so you already lost me. It enables you to take in what others don't notice. A little wad of bills hid away in the sugar bowl. The odor of a perp hiding beneath the floorboards. The gulp of a suspect after claiming they've nothing to hide. At high levels, perception takes in every final detail of the physical world, enough to overwhelm all but the strongest mind. However, with low levels, you're going to miss out on everything. After all, you can't arrest what you can't see, hear, or smell. Reaction Speed Shot dodgers, thinkers on their feet, pinball heads. Reaction speed is the agility of your body and mind. It is instinct. It enables you to dodge punches, knives, bullets. Also sucker punchers of the verbal kind. You'll be more streetwise, never lost for words or lacking a witty comeback. Your mental alacrity lets you connect little details on the fly, working in tandem with your intellect skills. At high levels, reaction speed makes your twitch reflex freakishly good. However, when your body acts before your mind, innocent situations can turn bad fast. You're high-strung, overly alert. At low levels, though, you won't be the one shooting first, which probably means you won't be shooting at all. Save your fare? Acrobats, thieves, unbearable show-offs. Save you, Savor? I don't know. Save your fair urges you to be better than you are. It urges you to be disco. Slip by others in Samarin boxing style, then tumble out the back with unexpected acrobatics. It enables you to move the silent footsteps, to groove to a good beat, and to lift useful evidence off perps without them noticing. It also makes you a cooler cop, whose athletic flair will certainly impress the citizenry. At high levels, Savor Fair 
will make you the king of cool, which is as much to say the most stylish douchebag in Revacol. Nobody will see you until you're ready to be seen, and then they'll get the full treatment, whether they want it or not. At low levels, however, you'll be a bumbling, feckless cop, unable to catch a pair of keys thrown by your partner without losing an eye. <laughs> Interfacing. Machinists, tinkerers, instrument players. Interfacing wants you to connect to machines, to use and improve them, because that makes you a better human organism. It enables you to understand interactions with machines, be that how to repair the motor of a kinema motor carriage, how to analyze the way a suspect used a pen, or how to refigure electrical circuits. It even lets you steal keys off a key ring without being noticed. At high levels, interfacing will isolate you from society. Why bother with people when you can talk to machines? And why bother with things like money when you can just pocket that display sandwich? At low levels, however, you will have a crucial part of the world cut off from you. People use machines to commit crimes all the time. If you can't understand how a crime was accomplished, how can you solve it? And finally, composure. Card players, military fetishists, cool people. Mm -hmm. Composure wants you to not crack, or at least it wants you to not crack in front of other people. It enables you to put up a strong front to keep your emotions hidden from the world and helps you to read the body language of others, to sense the cracks in their own composure. As well, it keeps you looking good while you do it. You'll rock that disco outfit a lot more if you don't slouch. At high levels, composure makes you tuck your gut in and maintain a stern expression. Even lying in bed late night when no one else can see you, you'll have to keep it up. You'll never be able to stop. Well, that's, that's a nightmare. With low composure, though, you'll always be the first to crack. Every cop's got a point when all that fear and rage comes spilling out, and the ones who unleash it don't stay on the force much longer. Perhaps worse still, you won't even make the ranks of fashion police. Oh, that was uncalled for. Well, okay. Signature skills. Definitely at least one thing from physique. Let's see. Um... Well, something from the middle I thought was nice. Yeah, physical instrument. If I can at least get to three, which is average level in this. Um, or was it half light I was thinking of? I think my high volition can counterpart to my lower endurance, so I think this one. Break doors, chains, and bones. Makes you laugh at the Namby Pansies who can't. Um, yeah, this will help me like detain people in a physical confrontation, so let's get this one as signature. What else? Wait, can I only can I only do one? I can only have one as my signature. Well, when I play RPGs, I'm very much the type to focus on covering my weaknesses instead of focusing all in on my strength. So I feel kind of good with this. All right, so I think this might be it. Confirm. Or do I make a custom character? The Furies are at home in the mirror. It is their address. Even the clearest water, if deep enough, can drown. R.S. Thomas. Oh! Okay, incredible quote there aside. I forgot, yeah. Before this game was called Disco Elysium, apparently the working name was No Truce with the Furies. Which is the most metal fucking thing in the whole goddamn world. Um, and also, between Elysium and Furies, I feel like there's some sort of Greek mythology angle here. Which excites me, because I like Greek mythology. It's neat. Alright. Begin.
There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Um. Right, so... Why is an ancient reptilian brain whispering sweet nothings in my ear? Hmm. I don't... I, I sure do like not doing anything. Ever. Yeah. Never. Ever. Yeah, that's great. Simply keep on non-existing. And an audience amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> wait, wait a second. Ex, uh, no, <laughs> ex-wives are contained within this nothing that I'm in. Wait a second. Oh no, wait. I think, wait. What was that about the ex-something? An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle, soaking in some lurid acidic source. It's bloated and shameful, a ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. Hmm. I'm starting to get the sense that I might be... Mm. I don't know if the character you play is some generic voiceless protagonist or not, but I'm getting the sense that I've dealt very badly with the divorce. Very badly. Tell me more about this X-something. x now. Extenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Mm hmm. Not after all the damage you suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of pelagic zone. <laughs> Alonzi, never let me go. <laughs> Okay, um, no, I want to get off now. I like pain and burning light and wanting things from people who don't want to give them to me. Ah, <sighs> okay. Do you really? Don't be naive, of course not. I want to sail the inky blackness until forever ends. All right, nothing town to fuck all, Barra. Look, there's... I am tired of being this type of animal, and who gives a shit? Not you. Your days of giving a shit and being that type of animal were over. <laughs> this game's great. Wait, no, I need to belittle myself instead. Do you really? I do. Let me off. I wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why'd you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much on yourself, got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? Marinating, huh? Okay. I am drunk off my ass, aren't I? Alright, alright. Fear and apprehension. You should ask what's out there first. So ancient reptilian brain, limbic system, and inland empire are now all talking to me. These are all body parts. Some metaphorical, yes, but they are a part of me. I am having a conversation with myself, it seems. This is amazing. Um, Alright, uh... Tell me, what's waiting for me out in that this world? giant ball there. An evil apes. 
and the evil apes are juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. It's basically all just evil apes juking it out on a giant ball. Oh, man. Oh, that reminds me. You know something that's always bothered me? In the Planet of the Apes, they never explain how the Statue of Liberty got transported to the Planet of the Apes, man. It's like, what the hell? Biggest, like, unexplained plot thing in all, like, films. It this just drives me nuts. <laughs> anyway. Uh, how's, how big is the ball? You can't even make out it's a ball when you're joking it out. It's that large. It's pretty big. And how small are the apes? Infinitesimally small. And this duking it out I keep hearing about. What's that? Fine for resources. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you. You know what? That's really sad. Yes, it is. And you drowned in that sadness a long time ago. I am no longer having fun. What do you mean drowned? You lost. The sound outside. You recognize it. It's a Caprice Camilla motor carriage. Huh. Okay, so Encyclopedia kicked in and told me what a noise was. Neat. Open your eyes. Oh. <laughs> no. Okay, okay. <laughs> Boy, I am just letting it all hang out there. Oh my... Oh, oh gross. <clears throat> Where are my pants? Okay, I... Oh, there's my pants. Take. Flare cut trousers. Minus one to save your affair. Plus one to electrochemistry. Neat. Okay, okay. Pants acquired. This video is now safe for YouTube again. Okay. Oh, there is a lot going on here and a lot to unpack. Okay. Hold tab to highlight. Ooh. I see. What is this? You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. Oh, I thank you, Perception. Fish them out. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. Okay. Well. Before we go out the door, let's at least clean ourselves up just a bit. Oh. Okay, the movement's a bit stiff. Okay, let's pick up this bottle. This magnum-sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. Yes, but I would like to pick it up, please. Or I might not actually be able to. Yeah, when I highlight things in the environment, only some things glow green. Is... Is my tie on the ceiling fan? Oh, hello. This fan has two chains. <laughs> One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Well, how did that happen? Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. All right. In an empire. Ties aren't friends, they're a noose. 
All right, so my pants are actually draining my savior fare by one, and I need this to see if I can grab it. So I have a 28% chance to succeed in grabbing the tie. Snake eyes always loses. Double sixes always wins. This is a white check. You may retry it. Okay, well... Okay, I, I don't like my odds, but this is harmless enough. Let's give okay, a smart thing to do is obviously to pull the light bulb. No, um, to like stop the fan. But I want to see if I can grab it. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap! It's released from the blade. Warning! Warning! The necktie is no longer contained. Yeah, got a necktie. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie. With four or five different patterns. <laughs> hey. The knot reminds you of a noose. Hey, I called it. It's a noose, not a friend. Yeah. Horrific necktie with four or five different patterns on it. Okay. If it's your friend, why was it up there? Who ties their friend to a ceiling fan? Maybe this thing is dangerous somehow. An ominous, foreboding feeling fills you as you look at the tie. Uh, okay, um... I don't trust myself to even pull on the fan. Maybe I'd unhinge it from the ceiling. Let's just leave. Okay, so like... I equip the tie? Oh my god, I did. I'm rocking the Donkey Kong, man. Right, uh, so I have like a bag. Inventory. I can see all my total statuses. So, okay, the necktie is giving me plus one to Inland Empire. All right, no wonder that kicked in there. I got a bonus. So, um, health is two, morale is four. Those are both health. Right, so what happens if one reaches zero? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so I have hat, jacket, shirt, pants, held in left hand, keys, glasses, neck, gloves, shoes, held in right hand, and bullets. I see. Okay, what else do I have? Okay, I can see my total stats. Um, right, yeah, I see Inland Empire is boosted up to 5. Unfortunately, Severe Fair is down to 1. That is not good. Not good at all. <gasps> I can level up? Oh, you level up in this game? Ooh! They really did put RPG in my VN, and I like that. Hello. Okay. I can't click on these two yet. Well, okay. Let's keep looking around. Um, put on a put on a shirt. Let's see. Disco ass blazer. Ah, plus one to esprit de corps. Nice. Still no undershirt, though. I'm now rocking the Funky Con. <laughs> Looks like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. This reel-to-reel -reel tape player is still on, rolling empty. Okay. There is a singular shoe on the coat rack. Green shoe for my left foot. Alright. The right foot shoe is missing. I see. <gasps> um, is that... Th did I break my window? Hold on. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. Ah. Oh. Man, okay. Okay, visual calculus is 4. 83% chance of winning. And I can retry it, so... 
The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. Yes! Dude, it is like my favorite thing in the world when you look for shards of glass to determine which side a window was broken from. Every time that comes up in some story or game or what have you, I'm like, yeah, that's neat. <laughs> and I can see, yeah, visual calculus, I'm now analyzing the world. I, I can see how it happened. It's so pretty. Did I break it with my own hands? Look at them. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your Ooh. right hand, but none of it is recent. Oh, that's okay then. How? What, what, what did this then? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Wait, what am I doing? No, no, don't think about it. Don't get meta. Just accept that you're doing brain stuff. Assess the size of the impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. Don't tell me it was my... Okay, I, don't, I can't tell what's worse. Was it my police gun or was it my other shoe? It was just the bottle. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost. Oh. It would have also been heavy oh. if thrown with force. My shoe's outside. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Don't rub it in. You only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. Oh, balcony. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. No. Let's let's not. Maybe let's not skirt responsibility. I should go and get that shoe. Oh, wait. I don't need it. I don't need anyone. <laughs> No, let's be responsible. The cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. Ah, plus five experience. And now my notepad has lit up. Journal, tasks, and map. Okay, acquire a copy of the city map. I see. Oh, green snakeskin shoe. Unite my shoes, right? And, uh, so just have one, one shoe. At least I found a sock. Okay, anything else? In, in here. It can freshen up. You see bottles in the bathtub. Wine, beer, and sweet liqueurs. Oh man, I had a good night, didn't I? Actually, no, it's probably really bad. Um, let's see. White satin shirt. Plus one to conceptualization. Minus one to suggestion. Alright. Um, once I find something I can possibly replace, I'll, uh, I'll double check what these stats do so it can make an informed decision when I make replacements for gear. But for now, I'll just rock my stuff. Um... Mirror. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> okay. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Oh, dude, I have wrecked my home. This sucks. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Oh, is now character creation, maybe? Really? Nothing? But really. All recollection of the person you are, the people in your life, and even the world you're in, has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. Dude, the voice acting in this is so good. <laughs> okay, wipe the mirror. Maybe I can create a character. At least, at least maybe, like, okay, I already allocated stats. Maybe this is where I go for appearance and name. As you slowly 
reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Well, you can't unbecome yourself. Yourself can change, though. Um, maybe I should... Maybe I should touch it first, make sure there's nothing wrong with my face. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. How, how bad could it be? Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. <laughs> I'm sure... <laughs> I'm sure everything is fine. Touch your nose. It's not. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't <laughs> appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. You call me a clown? Honk my nose? Dude, this... Whatever's speaking to me right now is... Is, is these backhanded compliments are ridiculous. I'll have you know, I am a noble and refined jester. We are domesticated clowns. Thank you. At least my tongue is okay. Touch your tongue. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Okay, rip off the band-aid. Wipe the mirror now. Behold. Ah! Hi. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? This is the face of a late-stage alcoholic. Too late. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. Oh, wait. Is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? I'm not making it. The face is making itself. Wait, I have no idea why it's there. It just is, yeah? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. No, keep making the face. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. <laughs> this is the face of a man who is desperately crying for help. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Superstardom. God, I don't know. It's indescribable. I think it's supposed to look suggestive. I'm afraid it's meant for the ladies. <laughs> I'm insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I think I'm sort of pulling it off, too, in a sad has-been kind of way. There is some charm to it. It's an expression... Of pain. You are correct. Ah. Okay. Oh. Encyclopedia 4. Dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. Or electrochemistry impossible. Attempt to stop the expression from happening. Let the mirror be for now. Wow. Okay, so my encyclopedia is at four. That's above average, but even then, it's a low chance. Well, it, it's a white check, so I can retry it. Let's see if I can look and see into my past. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. Okay, well... Oh! Locked. Put skill points into Encyclopedia to open this white check. I can't try it again. Okay, I wonder if that works for applying equipment, or if I actually have to, like, invest in Encyclopedia during a level up. Ooh... That is something I will have to experiment with later. Um, yeah, let's just let the mirror be for now. I see our portrait in the bottom left has updated. 
Well, I can click on it for a quick look at my stats. That's nice. Let's see. All right, so that's my shirt. That's my outfit. I can rotate the character. I don't know his name yet. I guess I'll just call him the dude for now. Yeah, the dude will work. It's that guy. Wait, there was a door. Locked? Hold on, can I get closer? I think it, I think it's just locked. That is very curious because I not I cannot imagine why a closet is locked. But okay, maybe that's where I put the body. Maybe maybe I'm the murderer. Who ever think about that? Eh? Um. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind. All right. In. Can I look out? The morning light hurts your eyes. It's hazy, but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. Oh, well, there's a bit of world building. We're near the ocean, and there was a war here at some point. That's interesting, but I think we'll have to wait until next time to step out of our room and begin exploring the world. We will embark on a grand and noble hunt for another snake. And get a skin and craft it into a fine shoe. <laughs> this game has caught my attention. I am extremely impressed with what I have seen so far. The writing is a treat. This is... Oh my god, I just I just noticed the wallpaper here is like a white colored version of the shining wallpaper. Oh god. Uh, once you see that pattern, you can never unsee it. Oh, and there's some outside too. Oh. Um. God. Jeez. Okay. Well, okay. This, is, this game's a lot. And I look forward to in, enjoying it slowly, savoring it bit by bit. This is, um. This is going to be an interesting time, I can tell. My god, I... If this game actually, truly does, actually live up to the sheer depth promised by this ridiculous and absurd skill system, and all the fancy-schmancy big words that all these say and tell me, I'm gonna lose my shit and call this the best game ever. I might play and replay this until the heat death of the universe, if that is the case. <laughs> but only time will tell. For now, I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been the beginning of Disco Elysium. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. So until then, please take care. <laughs>